The Mega Brace is a heavy duty modular hydraulic bracing system used for supporting large, heavily loaded square or rectangular excavations. It is used in conjunction with trench sheeting or piles and can incorporate cross struts to further increase its load capacity. The system comprises several hydraulic ram units, each with one metre of telescopic adjustment connected to a series of modular extension pieces to achieve the desired leg size. Due to the nature of this equipment and the size of the excavations it is likely to be used in, it should always be used in conjunction with a temporary works design. Prior to using the equipment, it is essential for the supervisor to be familiar with it by first thoroughly reading the user guide supplied by Groundforce with a higher documentation. The demonstration excavation in this sequence is approximately 9.5 by 4.5 metres in plan. The installation sequence starts with the excavation extents being marked out and pre-excavated to typically one metre or just below the required depth of the top frame. While this is going on, the modular components of each frame leg are pre-assembled, preferably on an adjacent hard standing. Leg components are joined by interlinking male and female splice blades and secured by two heavy-duty shear pins and retaining clips. The leg here is shown being assembled on its back. Transit bolts are used at the rear of each joint to avoid straining the blades during lifting and installation. These bolts are removed once the frame has been installed. The legs must only be lifted at designated lifting points indicated by red paint. Once the leg is fully assembled, it is lifted and placed into its correct orientation on reasonably level timber bearers within the excavation. The remaining legs are assembled in a similar manner before being lowered into the dig. The corner joint connections are made with a single pin through the male and female splice blades. To make the final connections, it is necessary to hydraulically adjust the ram units as shown. The pump operation sequence is covered in a separate toolbox torque. The Mega Brace is double acting and requires two hose connections between the pump and the ram. Care must be taken to ensure that the connections are made correctly to avoid difficulty in pumping out the rams. The secondary mechanical lock-off valve must be opened with a spanner provided in the installation kit to expand each leg. Once the legs are all joined together at the corners, the frame is adjusted to the correct size by pumping each leg out in turn. The sheets are pitched and driven behind this top frame. The KD6 sheets used here are being pitched and driven with an excavator mounted vibratory hammer or EMV. Vibratory methods are generally the most efficient means of driving sheets or piles in most ground conditions. The sheets are located in the gap between the back of the frame and the earth before being driven to depth including any toe-in below formation level as indicated on the scheme drawing. The pitching and driving operation is repeated around the excavation perimeter. Once all the sheets are in place, restraining chains are attached between the frame and the sheet tops at the location specified on the drawing. These should be no more than 3 metre centres around the frame perimeter. These chains are not certified and must not be used for lifting. 
The frame is levelled up by retracting and lifting the legs slightly and the chains are adjusted before pressurising each leg in turn to typically 1000 psi against the sheets, before locking off the valves. Excavation can now recommence. If a lower frame or frames are specified, the excavation is dug to approximately 300mm below the specified frame level, trimmed off and the frame installed following a similar procedure as for the top frame. Cross struts may be used to strengthen the frame and reduce deflection as mentioned earlier. Here an MP150 hydraulic strut is to be installed between the longer frame legs. An optional electronic load monitoring pin is available in these struts. This is installed into a standard swivel unit at one end of the strut. The electronic acquisition module is connected to the terminal on the pin and the anti-swivel plate attached. The assembly of the load pin is generally done in a ground force depot before being delivered to site. The GPRS receiving unit picks up the signals from the pin and transmits the load data to a receiving source. The strut is lifted using designated red painted lifting points so that it remains near horizontal. It is manoeuvred alongside the excavation close to the pump, the hoses are connected and the valve is opened. The strut is placed between the whaling beams so that the cleat at the non-adjustable end locates over the flange of the whaling beam. The pump is then operated to expand the strut to allow the other end to locate onto the beam. This handheld reader shows the increased load as the strut is pressurised to typically 1000 psi before the valve is closed and the hose is released. Approximately 15 tonnes of load is shown in the ram after installation. Further excavation takes place as required. Edge safe edge protection panels are now installed around the top of the dig. These clamp to the upstand on the sheets. A mini ladder safe access unit is also shown incorporated within the edge protection system. Removal is generally a reverse of the installation process after backfilling to the underside of frames has been completed. Double acting hydraulics allow the struts and frame legs to be retracted thus simplifying this operation. Once the frame is removed, sheets are extracted with the EMV before final backfilling takes place. Equipment is cleaned and stacked ready for collection. Care is needed to recover and return all pins and chains to avoid unnecessary charges. Please observe the following points while using this equipment. Always locate underground services before excavating. Prepare a lifting plan, assess weights correctly and use appropriate certified lifting equipment during installation and removal. Be thoroughly familiar with the user guide supplied with the equipment. Ensure all pins and clips are correctly fitted. Use only designated lifting points for chain attachment. Ensure that both hoses are correctly connected before operating the pump. Provide protection to the edge of the excavation. Attach at least one restraining chain every 3 metre run or as indicated on the scheme drawing. Keep personnel clear of excavator slewing zone and always use a qualified banksman. Inspect all components for signs of defects at the start of every shift. Do not exceed 1000 psi installation pressure unless specified by ground force. Do not over tighten lock off valves. Do not use pins and bolts other than those supplied by ground force. Do not install cross struts in positions other than specified on the scheme drawing. Do not use components ensuring fluid other than that supplied by ground force. Do not move into unsupported areas at any time. Do not allow excessive amounts of soil to collect on top of the frame or strut members. 
Do not use excessive force during installation and removal. Do not depressurize frame components without adequate support from backfill material being in place. Do not attempt to forcibly drag the frame out of the ground without releasing the pressure. Avoid striking the frame during excavation. Ground Force Shore Coat. Be safe and sure.